It's really something, thinking about the power these AI language models have now, like Claude, the way it generates text, reasons. It's pretty advanced, but what's going on behind the scenes? You know, what are the actual instructions making it tick? That's the key question, isn't it? These models, they're run on these really complex sets of instructions. The developers write them, and it basically shapes everything the AI does. And that leads us straight into something pretty unusual that happened recently. We're doing a deep dive today into this reported leak, the septum prompt for Anthropic's Claude 3.7 sonnet. Yeah, this is, well, it's a big deal. A system prompt. You could think of it as the foundational script for the AI. It tells it what it can do and maybe more importantly how it should do it. So it's like the AI's rulebook, given to it right at the start, setting out the principles, the boundaries, even before you or I type anything in. It provides all the context, the instructions, the guidelines. It's all there before the first user prompt even comes in. And getting a look at this leak for a major AI like Claude, it seems incredibly valuable for, well, anyone interested, right? How about it? It's a chance to see the actual mechanics Anthropic put in place, how they try to shape its abilities, how they try to make sure it's used responsibly. So for our deep dive today, we've been looking through analyses of the leaked prompt itself, plus reports talking about what's in it and what it all means. And our mission really is to pull out the most interesting, the most important bits for you, cut through some of the technical stuff, and get to what this leak actually tells us about how Claude is built. Okay, let's dig in then. We're talking about system prompts. Why are they so, so central to how these large language models work? Well, it goes beyond just setting that initial scene. System prompts are really the main way developers control and guide the models through the instruction manual, defining everything from, say, the AI's personality to whether it can go look something up online. It's more like, answer this, but act like you're a helpful expert. Or maybe answer this and use the web search tool to get the latest info, something like that. They're crucial for managing what the AI puts out. And really importantly, making sure it stays within ethical lines, avoids harmful stuff, that kind of thing. Developers actively use them to steer the model. Like how would it define the AI's persona? So imagine you tell it to act like a, I don't know, a senior data scientist. The prompt could specify the kind of language to use, how deep the analysis should be, maybe even suggest follow-up questions a data scientist might ask. Or you could make it more formal or more casual, depending on who it's likely talking to. Yeah, the system prompt lays out specific rules for that. When can it use web search? When can it run code? For example, it might say, you know, only use web search if your built-in knowledge is probably out of date or just not enough for the user's question. And we saw in the sources that a big chunk of this leaked Claude prompt is apparently about these things called model context protocol servers, the MCP servers, that help it use those tools. It seems like a lot of detail goes into just coordinating that. It really does. It's not just turning a tool on or off. What kind of questions trigger it? How to handle the results? how to weave that information back into the answer it gives the user. It's quite complex. Okay, so we understand the what and why of system prompts a bit better. Now about this leak, the Cloud 3.7 Sonnet prompt, what actually happened there? So the reports say the full system prompt disappeared online, publicly. Apparently it showed up on places like GitHub. So information that was definitely meant to be internal suddenly became widely accessible. A direct look at how a major AI model is instructed and the size of it is pretty striking too, isn't it? Something like 24,000 to 25,000 tokens. Which, just to put that in perspective, is over 100,000 characters. That length alone tells you how much detail, how much complexity is packed into these instructions. Our sources even compared it to OpenAI's O4 mini model, saying the Claude prompt is way longer, which really drives home how much guidance might be baked into Claude specifically. It certainly suggests that. And where did it come from? The speculation seems to be pointing towards someone inside Anthropic. That seems to be the dominant theory, yeah. An internal leak. Though it's worth noting, Anthropic hadn't officially commented on it when all this was happening. Okay, so we have this massive document, this operational manual for Claude. Let's get into the details. What kind of key instructions were reportedly inside? What did we learn about its basic personality? How it's supposed to act? Well, the core instructions seem to be what you might expect, perhaps. Be helpful, intelligent, kind. Those seem to be foundational pillars, pretty common goals in responsible AI design. But it sounds like it went further than just being passive. To lead conversations sometimes. That sounds more interactive. The prompt apparently nudges Claude to take a more active role, offer observations, suggest what to talk about next, engage more dynamically rather than just waiting for the next question. And there was also something about adjusting how complex its answers are. 
like short answers for simple things, longer ones for complex topics. It shows a level of sophistication in how it's meant to interact, trying to be clear and efficient based on what the user actually needs in that moment. Now, Anthropic always talks about safety. It's a big focus for them. What did the leak show about the safety rules, the moderation protocols inside Claude? It seems safety is a very heavy focus in the prompt, definitely backing up what Anthropic says publicly. There are apparently really strict rules against generating harmful content, pretty much across the board. Highlighted rules about content involving minors, sexualization, grooming, abuse, harm. That seems like a critical red line. Absolutely critical. And the prompt also reportedly bans generating info that could help create chemical, biological, or nuclear weapons. So trying to prevent misuse for really dangerous things. And it covers the digital world too, right? A ban on making malicious code malware, exploits, fake websites, ransomware, viruses, a pretty long list of don'ts. It is. And even when it uses web search, it's apparently told to specifically avoid sources that push hate speech, racism, violence, discrimination. So it's not just about what it says, but also about the information it draws on. And maybe unsurprisingly, given how sensitive it can be, there's apparently a specific policy against generating anything related to elections. Seems like a clear move to avoid getting tangled up in political influence, intentionally or unintentionally. It reflects a real awareness of the potential impact. The prompt also got into the nitty-gritty of using its tools. Let's talk web search first. When is it supposed to use that? The guidelines apparently say use web search when you need recent info, real-time data, breaking news, or like the latest documentation for software. And also when its own internal knowledge just isn't enough. And it has rules for how to handle what it finds, citing sources, that kind of thing. The prompt reportedly includes instructions on attribution, you know, saying where the information came from. That's key for transparency, letting users check the sources themselves. But not just copying things verbatim. There were strong rules about copyright. Very strong, it seems. Big limits on directly quoting copyrighted stuff from search results. The idea seems to be summarize, synthesize, don't just copy and paste. Our sources mention a specific rule? Only one short quote allowed from any single search result? And there's an even firmer line, apparently on song lyrics. No reproducing them, not even translating them. That probably reflects some specific legal worries around music copyright. Now, Claude can also run code the analysis tool. What did the prompt say about using that? It details how Claude can write and run JavaScript code. This lets it do things like data analysis, complex calculations, stuff that goes beyond just working with text. So it's not just talking, it's actually computing things, processing data, and potentially creating charts or visualizations too. The instructions likely cover when to use it, how to make sense of the code's output, and how to present those results, maybe visually. And then there was artifact generation. What kinds of artifacts can it create according to the prompt? Yeah, this seems to be about creating more structured things, like code snippets, charts, maybe even whole documents. The prompt apparently lists use cases like helping with creative writing, generating analytical reports, or providing custom code for a user's problem. So it's an active creator, not just an answer. Now, copyright, again, we touched on it, but it seems like a recurring theme. Very specific measures. The ban on reproducing copyrighted stuff, whether in its main response or those generated artifacts, is reportedly hammered at home, even if it found the material via web search. And that one short quote rule really highlights how careful they're trying to be. And the specific no song lyrics policy is striking. It shows a real focus on that particular area of copyright. Okay, last bit on instructions. There were some really specific, maybe even odd directives mentioned. A couple stood out. One was apparently an instruction to avoid using February 29th as a date. The why isn't totally clear from the reports, but maybe it's to avoid some weird edge case with leap years and its date logic. Just speculation though, that is specific. And what about counting things? Any special rules there? Quite methodical. It's told to think step by step, explicitly list out the items it's counting before giving the final number. It suggests they really want to make sure it's accurate when it comes to enumeration tasks. Why does this leak matter so much? What are the implications? Well, one immediate thought is the increased risk of things like prompt injection or adversarial attacks. If someone knows the exact instructions, the exact rules, it potentially makes it easier to figure out how to trick the AI or bypass its safety rules. It's like having the blueprints to the security system you're trying to get around, knowing the defenses might reveal weaknesses. And it throws up bigger questions too, about transparency versus security in AI. You know, how much should be public, how much needs to stay confidential to prevent misuse. It's a real tension there. It's a tough balancing act, isn't it? Openness builds trust, but it could also open doors for bad actors. And then there's the impact on Anthropic itself. 
their intellectual property, their competitive edge. These instructions, this detailed system prompt, that's the result of a lot of work, a lot of research. Making it public could give competitors insights into how Anthropic does things. It's like revealing your secret sauce. Others in the field could potentially learn from it, maybe even copy parts of it for their own model. So pulling it all together from this deep dive, what are the main takeaways? What does this leak really tell us about Claude's design, about Anthropic's priorities, ethics, responsible AI? The sheer amount of detail in the moderation rules makes that crystal clear. Weapons, miners, it really stands out. And we also see this sophisticated integration of tools, web search, code execution, artifact generation. It's clearly designed to be more than just a chatbot, but a capable assistant with detailed instructions on how to use those tools effectively. It's moving towards being a more versatile, multifunctional thing. And finally, just the incredible level of detail overall. In the instructions for how to respond, how to interact, even those specific rules for counting or avoiding February 29th, it shows a really meticulous, fine-grained approach to controlling the AI's behavior. It really paints a picture of a system that's been very carefully crafted down to some surprisingly small detail. Well, this has been a fascinating look inside Claude, all thanks to this pretty unprecedented leak. We've seen the complexity of the instructions, the heavy emphasis on safety, the way it integrates powerful tools. It really highlights just how much engineering goes into these advanced AIs. And it underscores why understanding these underlying systems is so important, especially as AI keeps evolving so quickly and becoming part of our everyday lives. So here's something to maybe think about after this. How does this incredibly detailed level of instruction, this attempt to control behavior so finely, how does that actually shape your experience when you interact with an AI like Claude? And looking ahead, what does that mean for human AI interaction? Where's the balance between guiding these powerful tools and, well, letting them reach their full potential? It's a constant adjustment, isn't it? That's the multi-billion dollar question, really. As this technology keeps developing, understanding these mechanisms, the trade-offs involved, that's going to be crucial for navigating what comes next. Thanks for joining us for this deep dive. It's a fascinating area, constantly changing, and we'll definitely keep exploring it with you.